principles of management of plant viral diseases so now we will see what are all the principles involved in the management of plant viral diseases so my name is anit shankar reddy and i am doing phd plant pathology in alam university so viral diseases are uh, managed by means of uh, two broad categories one is by using uh, conventional approaches and the second one is uh, biotechnological approaches so now we'll see one by one so the first one is conventional approaches now we'll see what are all the different types of conventional approaches are available in uh, managing the plant viral diseases so the conventional uh, approaches will include uh, using our uh, you know ensuring the virus free propagative material during the propagation so phytosanitary that is quarantine the second one is cultural practices like you know uh, planting date adjusting the planting date maybe space or barrier crop or intercropping or uh, avoidance of rotten cropping that may be favorable for the virus diseases so the management of a vector by means of uh, chemical sprays so so coming to the conventional approaches these are all the different types of uh, conventional approaches are available in uh, managing the plant viral diseases or reducing the inoculum of uh, plant viral diseases the first one is indexing and certification program second one is heat therapy third one is meristem drip culture fourth one is oil sprays fifth one is cross production sixth one is barrier crop seventh one is reflective mulches and final one is natural resistance now we'll see one by one first one is indexing and program certification program so in indexing and certification progress uh, mainly includes the elimination the source of virus or elimination the source of uh, uh, infectious particle that is a virus so first one is removal of virus infected plants if a if a field is get infected by the virus it's a better to remove the virus infected plants the second one is prevention of direct contact of healthy plants with the infected plants make sure that uh, uh, the healthy plants are not in contact or not in uh, contact with the uh, infected plants so the use of virus free certification program material so using the certification or virus free stock material or nuclear material for the propagation of uh, uh, crops will be essential uh, in, uh, in, in escape of uh, plant viral diseases and use of virus free seeds it's also one of the uh, indexing and certification program for the management of plant viral diseases so as i told you that uh, use of uh, virus free seeds or propagative materials will be essential now we will see what are all the techniques are how to produce the virus free plants through the technique of tissue culture or through plant breeding or in vitro propagation of apical meristem these are all the different types of uh, techniques which are involved in the production of virus free plants so after production of virus free plants or nuclear materials are the propagating materials it is distributed to the plant breeders so that it can be distributed all over the nations so second one is heat therapy heat therapy so virus or virus uh, propagative materials or stock material can be uh, eliminated by using heat therapy this is a physical method now we will see so hot treatment of dormant propagative organs that may be tubers or budwoods if it is get infected by the plant viruses that can be eliminated at the rate of 35 to 54 degrees centigrade for few hours to few minutes few minutes to few hours so for example potato leaf roll virus can be eliminated from the potato tubers if they stored in a summer at the temperature of 36 degrees centigrade Uh, at if we store this potatoes at 30 degrees in 36 degrees centigrade we can eliminate the potato leaf roll virus and one more thing is thermotherapy thermotherapy is in the sense high temperature treatments are uh, 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 widely used for the production of virus free plants that is 30 to 40 degrees centigrade so some of the examples of thermotherapy and what are all the plants that are produced through the thermotherapy therapy are which are given below so the first one is host second uh, second column is virus eliminated at temperature so as i told you thermotherapy through thermotherapy in chrysanthemum chrysanthemum b virus chrysanthemum b virus can be eliminated at the temperature of 35 to 38 degree centigrade 35 to 38 degree centigrade and the second one is in carnation carnation ring spot virus carnation wheat motile vi- wheat motile virus can be eliminated at the temperature of 35 to 40 degrees centigrade in banana cucumber mosaic can be eliminated through thermotherapy at the rate of 35 to 40 degrees centigrade in gooseberry gooseberry wheat mosaic can be eliminated at the rate of 30 degrees in 35 degrees centigrade in potato potato virus y 
yes and x can be eliminated at the rate of 33 to 38 degrees centigrade so these are all the different types of thermotherapy techniques which can be used to eliminate uh, various plant viruses on the particular host third one is meristem tip culture so this meristem tip culture is used to produce virus free stalks or virus free planting material so we all will know well about this meristem tip so due to this continuous division the plant viruses are can't able to multiply or can't able to grow inside the meristematic tissue by taking this advantage by using this meristem tip culture we can produce virus free plants so normally we will see some procedure how to produce a, a, a virus free plants through meristem, meristem tip culture so in the typical meristem tip culture where we know that plant viruses are can't able to grow under in vitro conditions the virus free plants are raised virus free plants are raised so here the basic ingredients which is required is mineral salts maybe macro and micronutrients are required sucrose and one growth stimulating factor that may be indolestic acid or gibberellic acid or sometimes maybe agar is required for this purpose so a single cells or small clumps of cells of the particular production material that may be if you are putting on the if you are planning to produce uh, you know uh, a potato you can have the small clumps of potato or if you are producing some other infect uh, some other planting material so have the small clumps of that uh, planting material that you plan to grow they may be uh, you know uh, the plant may be gives rise to virus free plants if you sometimes even though if you select a virus infected plants the they will give virus free plants to this meristematic tip culture so usually due to this meristematic tip culture virus free plant virus free plants can be produced so normally uh, uh, you know this technique can be well adapted for chrysanthemum for the production of a chrysanthemum carnation or protato sometimes a tobacco ring spot virus also it can be employed so this meristematic tip, tip culture is mostly employed for uh, you know production of uh, virus free plants in a laboratory conditions fourth one is chemotherapy so this chemotherapy or use of uh, chemical controls will not be much successful in the management of plant viral diseases it's not very successful see in the in the case of pre-treatment of a tobacco plants with a virazole however it is treated with a virazole delayed or preventing the systemic infection with the tomato spotted wilt virus it just delayed or prevent the systemic infection but virus infection will be definitely occurs that's why i told you that in this chemical control of plant viral management will be not much successful or very small successful on management of plant viral diseases a chemical that is carbendazim uh, present in the fungicide bavistin it's a trade name so that reduces the virus induced symptoms that only reduced the virus in induced symptom but has no effect on virus or no effect on the management of plant viral diseases here such symptomless hosts are, hosts are very dangerous and they say they said to be serve as a reservoir of the viruses for the other plants if the plants are the adjacent plants don't show any symptoms they are very dangerous and they can be serve as a reservoirs of a reservoir a reservoir of host for the plant viral disease and so that that can uh, uh, so that the virus can multiply and can infect on the adjacent plants or other plants so the chemical so the chemical treatment it not uh, you know itself it not uh, it, uh, practically uh, in use so however the chemical treatment are combined with the heat treatment of meristem tip culture maybe have some advantages or maybe show uh, maybe give some relief on uh, plant viral diseases but chemical treatment alone itself will found uh, not much useful and a practical usage fifth one is electrotherapy so this is an advanced technique as a recent technique by using the electrical pulse the plant viruses can be eliminated it is a recent technique that gained importance or much more attention in recent days so by using this electrotherapy technique potato virus x can be eliminated from the clones of potato by using this electrical pulse technique potato virus x can be eliminated in potato and some other uh, uh, you know crops like garlic sugar bean sugar cane potatoes arecas so from this plants the infected different types of uh, infected viruses like poti viruses luteo viruses carla viruses can be eliminated by using this electrotherapy technique 
Sixth one is plant protection chemicals. So the application of plant protection chemicals which act as a defensive mechanism or which act as a defense substance against the plant virus infections. So this plant production includes maybe plant extracts which act as a uh, this possess some antiviral properties so that it can manage the plant viral diseases or reduce the inoculum or you know or severity or infection of the plant viruses. So this plant production uh, extracts or plant production chemicals are for two types of inhibitory responses that they show in uh, plant man in management of uh, plant viral diseases. The first one is they reduce the virus activity when co-inoculated with the virus in susceptible plants. When we are inoculating the virus along with this plant extract in a susceptible plant, they reduce the inoculum. As I told you, it possess some inhibitory substances. So when we co-inoculating with the virus, this co-inoculated plant extract which reduce the inoculum of virus in a susceptible plants. So the plant extracts like Phytolacca americana and Dianthus caryophyllus will reduce the activity when co-inoculated with the susceptible plants. Extract from the few non-host infected plants like Borivi, sorry, Boravia diffusa, Clerodendron acuatum and Mirabilis jalapa. When we inoculate this uh, extracts or plant extract into the virus infection and development of symptoms by stimulating the production of viral inhibitory of susceptible plants when sprayed is prior to virus inoculation. So if we inoculate this Borivia diffusa, Clerodendron aculatum, Mirabilis jalapa onto the host plants before virus inoculation, before the virus inoculation, if we spray this or if we inoculate or if we spray this, it inhibits the virus inf infection and the development of symptoms that is stimulated by the plant virus. Initially, the first set of plant extract that is Pytolaca americana and Dianthus caryophylla that we are uh, inoculating along with the viruses so that reduce the infection of plant viruses. Here the second set when in non-host plants that we are uh, uh, inoculating or spraying before virus inoculation, before virus inoculation, if we spray this non-host uh, uh, on non-host plants like the plant extracts like Borivia diffuser, Clerodendron, Aculatum and Mirabilis Janapa, the inhibit it inhibits the virus infection and the development of symptoms can be inhibited before virus infection or if we inoculate before uh, uh, virus infection. So it, it this secondary non-host plants or this Borivia diffuser substances can stimulate the production of viral inhibitory agents so that the disease so that the disease can be managed or the uh, infection or the production of symptoms can be delayed or reduced the second one is elimination and control of insect vectors so if we avoid the vector by means of growing uh, growing that isolate of vectors crop which can isolate vectors or the by growing a barrier crop or by using a reflective mulches that is not suitable for uh, uh, vectors or that can reflect the mulches. So in the second technique is virus management, virus sorry vector management. So if we manage a vector viral diseases are also automatically ma managed because the plant viruses are transmitted from one area to another area through vector only. So vector act as an agent or uh, you know uh, for the transmission of plant viral diseases. So by using the insecticides or application of insecticide we can manage the insect vectors or we can reduce the virulence of the insect vector or we can spraying the water with oil emulsions will reduce the field spread of viruses so which is very sticky so that the plant viruses uh, plant viral transmitting vectors can be stick onto the particular uh, emulsions or some uh, you know sticky traps like that. So the fungal and nematode transmitting viruses can be controlled by using style sterilization with the chemicals. So if it is a vector that can we can be managed by using a natural techniques like growing of some uh, AI, uh, barrier crops or reflective mulches. In vector management practices by you by application of uh, insecticides as well as spraying of oil emulsions along with if the viruses are transmitting through the uh, you know uh, uh, nematode Nematodes, we can soil solarize the soil so that uh, along with the chemicals so that the soil can be completely sterilized or the nematodes which are there in the soil can be dead so that the plant viruses can't move from area to area or the plant viral infection cannot happen. So the second one is biotechnological approaches. The first one is conventional approaches. The second one is biotechnological approaches. By using biotechnological approaches, pathogen derived resistance that is PDR. First one is protein based production by using by obtaining the proteins or coat proteins of the particular infectious virus 
we can made code protein based protection like you know we if we encode the virus proteins or if we encode the code proteins of the plant viruses majority in majority of the cases code protein can be uh, encoded or uh, sequenced so by transferring into the host species by transferring into the host species the characteristic features will happen if the higher the inoculum lower the protection the level of protection is high if the sequence similarity is high of the plant virus code protein in tobacco mosaic virus code protein does not protection against the inoculation with the viral rna what they are trying to conclude in the pro protein based protection if we isolate the particular protein from the uh, infected virus that code protein is completely sequenced or completely transferred into the host species let us consider we are isolating some code protein from the tmb this code protein can be sequenced and inoculated or genetically inoculated by using different types of technological approaches biotechnological approaches in host plant after if if we inoculate into the code protein into the host plant what will happen if the virus come in come in contact or try to infect already code protein units are which are already there that can be act as a um, you know due to this mild strains the plant virus the virus uh, uh, sorry the vector get immunized or the plant vector plant uh, sorry not vector plant get immunized so that it can immediately identify the plant virus so that the defense reactions will trigger so that the infection will be uh, reduced or the amount of severity of infection will be reduced right completely checks the virus infection this is one of the biotechnological approaches that is protein based protection or due to this inoculation of the protein coat what will happen once the plant virus enter into it it can't able to uncoat it can't able to replicate inside the plant virus so that we can manage the plant virus this is also one of the uh, biotechnological approach or protein based protection the second one is rna based mediated production biotechnology second one is rna mediated production that is rna in the sense it is otherwise called as the mechanism is otherwise called as rna interference rna interference so this biological process in which rna or double stranded rna molecule which inhibits the expression of gene or regulates the expression of genes so that the mrna molecule can't be formed or can't express it uh, can't express it so the proteins can't form so that the infection will be checked completely here this rna interference it is a biological process in which double stranded rna which inhibits the gene expression which inhibits the gene expression that i will tell you so this uh, coming to the discovery this mechanism was first discovered by andro fire and craig mello in a nematode or lully worm that is kino rabdi cell against in 1998 for that they share nobel prize in 2006 for the discovery of rna interference mechanism so this rna interference mechanism is very very important that can be revolutionized in the management of plant viral diseases so now i will tell you in a simple manner what is rna interference so we all will know about that transcription transcription and translation mechanisms will be very very important for the production of uh, proteins so in transcription mechanism what will happen from dna from dna mrna is formed mrna which comprises of messenger rna which comprises of message that can be read by the ribosomes and produce the proteins that is essential for the functioning of plant plants so here in transcription from transcription what will happen dna to mrna is formed that is transcription in translation what will happen from mrna to protein is formed in in you know in multiplication mechanism that we all seen in translation mechanism in transcription mechanism what will happen sorry in translation mechanism what will happen this mrna the viral rna can be converted into mrna if the ribosome can read the mrna that is viral mrna that can produce the proteins required by the viruses because the ribosomes read the read the mrna of plant viruses not the mrna of plants so in in this rna interference mechanism what will happen it abrupts or it it can it stops the translation mechanism or it inhibits the translation mechanism so that the viral mrna can't be read and it can't produce proteins if it can't produce proteins what will happen it can't able to produce the essential viral components that is required by the plant viruses so the infection is completely checked or the viral disease can be managed so this rna interference was first discovered by andrew fire and craig mello in a nematode that is kino rabdis elegans in 1998 it's a very 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 important mechanism so this is about the management of plant viral diseases